Hi everyone, Sarah here from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery with another video for you and today we're going to talk all about silk threads. We're also going to give some away so do keep watching to see how to get your hands on those and we have a bonus video as well coming for our members and patrons and if you want to know what membership and patrons um, is about then do check out the description below this video to see what that's all about. So in previous videos we have had a look at embroidery cotton or floss We've also had a look at some linen embroidery threads and we looked as well at cheap embroidery threads and whether they were any good. So if you haven't seen those videos, do check them out. And today we're going to look at some expensive threads. So we're going to look at some silk threads. And I wanted to start just by showing you these because we've got real silk and imitation silk in here. This is the real silk and this is an imitation silk. We'll talk about the kinds of silk in a minute because there's three, three or four different kinds. Um, but I just wanted to show you the difference between these because you really need to look at the label and see that it is 100% silk if you want to use silk. So this is what's called um, an unspun or a flat silk. It's not twisted. We'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. So this is an actual silk. And you can see that it's not mega shiny like this one is. And it's sort of quite fine. The fibres are very fine. And if you've got rough hands... Um, you will know if you've ever used any silk that it picks up on your hands. We'll talk a little bit more about that later as well. Um, so I just wanted to show you the real one next to the imitation one. So this is no silk content at all. If it actually says what it's got in it. It says imitation silk embroidery thread. Actually say what it's got in this one, but it's probably a rayon. And you can see how shiny this one is, and it's not quite as fibrous as this one. It all stays together nicely. When I touch it with my fingers, it doesn't stick to my fingers like this one does. It does look super shiny, but you can see how kind of wiry it is compared to this one, which is more like a thread. So if you wanted to do something that looked like silk, but maybe the price was limiting for you, or you couldn't get the actual silk, um, then you can look at this imitation, but just do be aware that it does look quite different. It's a bit more blingy and a bit more shiny. Um, it, it is more wiry to use. It is quite difficult to use as well um, in a different way. Silk is a bit difficult as well, so in a different way. But just to be aware that that's the difference between the two. So if you see it's beautiful, shiny, do just check whether it's imitation or it's real silk if you want the real thing. Um, I just want to mention these ones as well. You might come across these. We've got some different makes of silk here. It's, it's by no means the whole range of um, manufacturers that you can get of silk, but it's a good variety of it. So this one is Raj Mahal. You might heard of their threads. And this one is called an art silk. And generally, if you see something that says art silk, it's not fully the real deal. Now, this one is a viscous natural fibre blend. It doesn't say what the natural fibres are, but if it was silk, it would say silk on it. So this doesn't have any silk in it, even though it's called art silk. And this is a twisted one, which we'll talk about as well. But you can see that's got that shine on it too, to make it look like real silk. So that one is an art silk, so that's an imitation one. And then I just wanted to show you these ones as well, that don't pretend that they're silk, or they're trying to be silk. Um, they're anchor marlet, and they are... 100% viscous rayon, but they're kind of a good silk equivalent if you want. And you can see sort of how kind of springy that is. It doesn't have the real feel of silk, but they are beautiful and shiny and a really intense colour. So again, if you want an alternative, this sort of thing is definitely worth looking at. It's not the real thing, but it is quite a good alternative if you want it. So as I mentioned earlier, the silk threads come in three different types. Now there are a few extras um, in the form of some quite unusual threads and silk ribbons of course as well. But we're going to look at the three main types of silk threads that you can get. I'm going to start with the stranded ones. So if you're familiar with stranded cotton or stranded floss, this is what that looks like, but it's in silk. So I've got a couple of different makes of it here. Now if you're in the US, you're quite lucky because you get a lot more choice of silk than we do for your, for your needle points. So you will be familiar with these and you'll probably know some extra ones as well. Um, but we're going to have a look at um, so we've got a northern lights one now this is really beautiful this it looks like stranded cotton um, but it feels so soft it's really really lovely and this has got eight ply so there's eight different strands in here and you just separate out the strands they're not twisted together you can just separate the ends and pull one out and you can choose how many strands you use and that's a nice variegated one it's got a really lovely feel to it 
This is another brand Needlepoint Ink. You'll know these if you're in the States. You'll be probably very familiar with these. And this one is also eight ply as well. So more strands in it than a stranded cotton or floss would have. Um, all 100% pure silk as well. So they're kind of very similar really, just different brands, um, different makes of silk thread. And then we've got um, a Vera Soir. Now this is made in France. And this comes in lots of different shapes and sizes and forms. And I had to look them all up because I was like, what's the difference between these two? But these are, again, stranded. So if I just hold that there, hopefully you can see. If I just separate out the ends here. So you can see the different strands. And again, you just pull what strand you need and then you can use as many as you want. Now, these separate st strands are twisted together. That's important because we've got a different kind of silk later that isn't... Um, so they will stay together quite nicely. And again, you just choose what you want. Now, this one is a very soir, soir de Paris. Now, I've got to look this up because... So six strands, and this one comes in 100 colours. And then this one is also a very soir, and this is soir de Alger, Alger. And you can see the difference. Now, this one is seven strands, and this one is six. I thought, well, what's the difference between those two? And I couldn't actually find from their website what the difference was. Um, didn't really make a lot of sense. So if anybody knows, you can let me know in the comments below. But you can see they look different. This one has definitely got more of a shine, so I'm guessing there's something in the process or the silk that they use. They are 100% silk, by the way. So this one is more shiny, and this one is a bit more textured. So really, I think you just need to understand how you use the silk so that these ones are stranded. You take these apart, you choose the number of strands that you want to use. Um, only five meters in this one. And in fact, all of these have got five meters. So you get, they're more expensive and you get less for your money. <laughs> so it is a consideration with silk. If you want to do a big project, do look at what it's gonna cost you because you don't get quite so much for your money on that one. So that's a stranded silk. So the second kind of thread I want to talk about is a twisted thread. So this isn't separated. You don't separate out these twists. You use them as they are off the reel. You cut yourself a length and you use the length as it is. Now they come in different twists. So you can get a two-ply twist or a three-ply twist. Um, I think the three-ply twist covers a little bit better probably than the two-ply. Um, but I've got again a couple of different manufacturers of this. So this is uh, De Vere Yarns. Um, got some different sizes here, so 36, 12, and that's a 6. So the larger the number with this, the thicker the thread for this. Um, and these are all got a twist on them. Now they've got quite a fine twist. Let's see if I can show you that. Quite a loose twist. So these are three-ply twists, um, and they change in size. So this one's a very fine, and this is the thickest one. Um, I've got um, one here. This is an unbranded one. So this is a two-ply twist on it. These ones don't exist anymore. Coats used to make these. It is quite difficult to get silk threads now. Um, there used to be a lot more of them. They got replaced with, with sort of really good quality cottons instead, and it's a little bit harder to get. So some of the ones I've got, you can't actually get anymore. So this is one of those. But again, this is a, that's a three-ply twist as well. Uh, we've got another Overa Soir one. So this is Soir Gobelin. And this, I think, is a two-ply. Yes, it is. And then we've got the Overa Soir Perlay thread on these really cute little wooden <laughs> poppins. I don't know why this is on a plastic one and this is on a wooden one. I don't know. And this is a three-ply one and that's a little bit thicker. So we'll probably have a go with that later as well. So you just use these straight off the reel. They'll be either two-ply or three-ply. So the third kind I want to talk about is a flat silk. So this is an untwisted silk. These are the fibres of silk just lying together flat and you can use these um, as many as you like. Now, it's not quite like stranding a stranded floss or a stranded cotton. Um, these are very, very fine. And if I can pull one out, let's try this red one. can see here, hopefully you can see, it's really kind of fibrous and very delicate. Now this one is quite hard 
to handle. <laughs> There's lots of little tips and tricks on how to use this thread. It's used a lot in Japanese embroidery and Chinese embroidery as well. And it gives this really beautiful sheen. So you don't get the twist of the thread making a texture. You just get the fibers all lying flat together and that gives it an incredible sheen. It is harder to use um, because of that. It does stick to your fingers quite a lot. Um, and you can ply as many of these together as you like, or you can just um, make that one even finer. You can pull that one apart. You can literally go down to kind of one fibre if you, if you wanted to. Why would you want to? Um, but the finer that thread is, the more detail you can do, and then you can use more um, more of it together for larger areas. Um, this is a Piper's silk one, and you can see the colours absolutely amazing with this really stunning and you can see the shine on it this is what it looks like when you've stitched with it it's this shiny and um, this is another Avera Soir one so this is oval um, and this is the same as well so this is also a flat silk you can actually see it a little bit better with this one there we go I just separate out those five and you can see how I'm sort of handling it I'm not pulling it off and handling it a lot because it's um doesn't take kindly to that and you can really just take it down to those few fibres and stitch something really fine and delicate. So quite hard to use this one. It does look absolutely stunning and great if you want a nice shiny finish. Before we try these threads out, I just want to mention some vintage silks. So if you're ever in a charity shop or in a, a jumble sale or a flea market or something like that, it's always worth having a route around for these um, because there are quite a few available still. And I'll just show you a couple. So this is filler cell silk. Now this they only stopped making quite recently, so you might still be able to get quite a bit of this if you have a route around online for it. Um, made by Purcells, um, really beautiful silk to use. And I did actually stitch my Egyptian piece in this. You can have a look at that if you haven't seen it. Um, yeah, that video um, all about how I stitched that. And I used these vintage threads because I wanted to give it a little bit of more of a vintage feel, see if I could make it look a little bit older. You do have to be careful with vintage silk threads though, because they do rot. So they only have a, um, a particular lifespan. And if they get warmer than the heat, um, then they can start to rot. So you just need to take a little bit, see how easily it breaks. That breaks quite well. Silk is quite strong. Um, and it shouldn't really break that easily. So that one's beginning to go really. So you might just want to test the silks out and see if they're good enough to use. They look quite pretty. If you don't want to use them, just have them around, make a nice display. But if you want to use them, do just check out the strength of them because they may be past their best. And what else have we got here? So another purse was one Maltese silk. So this is more for sewing. This has got a twist on it. Um, and this would have been used for actual sewing. There's a finer one here. And Eastern. Oh no, that's Purcell's as well. Stout Floss, they call this one. And you can see by the end of this which one this is. So this is the flat silk. It's not been twisted together. So you would separate it out and just use that as it is. And you can see what a nightmare it could potentially become. This is an old one, so the end's got a bit um, a bit knotted up. So we'll just cut that off. But really beautiful threads still the feel of them is absolutely gorgeous so that is a flat silk so they come in the same principles that we just looked at of the twisted the stranded and the flat silk so once you know that you can have a look at the thread and decide which one it is and whether you want to use it but definitely worth having a look for some vintage threads you might find some other exciting threads made out of silk i found this one on the Averisoir website this is a chenille um, and I just thought it looked really fun. I had no idea what to do with it, but I do have an idea for another video um, that we could include this in. So I will come back to this one in another video later. So just check the label again, see what it's made of, see if there's something fun that you could have a go with. So before we have a go at stitching with them, I just want to mention a little bit about how to handle silk threads. If you've ever had a go with them, you will notice they do stick to your fingers. If you've got any rough parts at all, or your fingernails aren't nicely manicured, um, they can stick to your hands. So something to think about if you want to use silk. If you're a gardener, I'll wear gardening gloves. <laughs> Definitely, I have had that in a class before. But well, we've been gardening all weekend and then it's just, it's a nightmare. So do um, give your hands some treatment. I don't suggest putting a load of hand cream on before you start stitching, not a good idea. Silk will soak up that hand cream um, and the oil oiliness in it and will have an effect on your threads. So if you can sort of think about it a few days before, are oh, my hands a bit rough? 
give them some treatment, trying to find some hand cream that's got, got many horrible chemicals or nice smells in it because the more stuff it's got in it, the more bad things for the silk really so just something to think about on handling it um, and storing it as well it is a natural fiber it is come does come from the silkworm um, and moths um, will eat it so storing it keep it somewhere dry out of the sunlight and somewhere sealed so in a plastic box so that the moths can't get in and munch away on all your expensive threads so let's try one of each of those different categories of silk and see how they feel to work. Um, so we're going to start with the, the De Vere yarns one, and this is a twisted one. So this is a three ply, so it's three different pieces of silk twisted together. And we've got a number 36 here, so this is quite a thick one. And the first thing I notice is when you cut it off here, it's quite springy. It does unravel quite easily, so you may want to think about how you store that so it doesn't unravel like a crazy thing. I'm using a fairly large needle for this. I don't want to wear that silk thread as it goes through the fabric. If you don't know how to choose the right size of needle for your thread, we do have a video all about that and all about needles because a needle is not just a needle. Um, you need the right one. So I'm using a an embroidery needle. I've um, got a number seven for this. We'll see how this goes because I don't want to squash that silk thread. I'm just going to stitch a little bit of this and it's a little bit like stitching with an invisible thread. It's like the Emperor's New Clothes. You can't really feel it, so you've got to be quite careful with it. I'm just going to do a stem stitch with it because it is quite fine, this thread. So if I use a stem stitch, I can just make a slightly thicker stitch with it. It's sort of quite wiry, this one. I think it's because it's got quite a heavy twist on it. So you should pull it through to the back and then pull it through to the front. That's how you should really stitch it. Now, I do have to say that I am not very experienced with silk threads. I don't use a lot of silk threads. I make the videos for YouTube. You, doing them in silk isn't really any advantage over cotton at all so I tend to use cotton a lot so I'm not that experienced in silk I have used some of the Avera Soir before but I think if you want to stitch something really special or an heirloom or a present for somebody these would be quite nice it's pulling a little bit on that and I'm not sure if that's because my needle size so I shall just do a little bit more and see I feel it should be big enough it's better it is quite nice and smooth it's lovely to stitch with, it has to be said. But what you can do if you want to stitch with silk is you could find the colours in cotton first. If you want to do your sampling and a little bit of practice first, you could do that in your cotton. And then when you're happy with what it is you're stitching, you can then go to your silk thread. So you're not really practicing with your silk because you don't really want to use it for practicing. Try a little bit out just to see how it handles. But as I said, it is more expensive so that might be a consideration for you so stitching really nicely i don't have to worry about keeping the strands together or the fibers together with the other two so i'm sort of starting with the easiest one so i guess if you've never used silk this is probably a good place to start because you're not worrying about tension of your other threads they're twisted together so that part's done for you and you can just have a go at using the actual thread and enjoy using the silk as it is. So I've stitched all around this S and, and there's no substitute for actually sitting and doing some stitching with it to understand the thread and how it works and there's a couple of things I found out. So the end does come unraveled a little bit um, so I was fighting with that with change thread. I've used two threads so far. Um, so you do fight that a little bit and it twists up quite easily when you're making your stitch. So just let your thread drop underneath, just let it untwist um, and carry on because it was getting a little bit, not knotted, but kind of was fighting with it a little bit. So just let it untwist and then I do recommend fairly short lengths of this. Don't go too long. It is quite nice and smooth so it's going through really nicely but it is just getting itself in a bit of a tangle. I hope I've got enough to get to the end. I'm going to make it get to the end because it's really nice and smooth. It actually doesn't feel like it's wearing at all. 
so long as I just let that untwist. Really enjoying stitching with it actually. Really nice thread to stitch with. But yeah, I can feel that it's it's different from normal floss. So short threads, let it untwist. And there we have it. So that is a twisted silk. So let's have a go with the flat silk. Now there's a reason I've chosen to do the letter I in the flat silk um, because it's the smallest letter because this is hard to use this silk. Not a huge fan of it but I haven't used it a lot so probably just find it a bit frustrating for that reason. So just reeled a little bit off. Now you can see how fine it is. So I'm going to actually double this up. I'm going to put them together because you won't be able to see it otherwise and that will make it even harder. So I'm going to Pull off a couple, try that length. I'm going to utilise a few extra tools to help me with this. So I'm going to use a finer needle. I'm going to try an embroidery number nine. Now I could probably easily use a ten for this, but I want to be able to see it under the camera. And if it, everything gets a bit too small, I can't see it and you can't see it. And, the whole exercise will be pointless, so I'm going to just try a slant. I can't even thread it. It's coming apart trying to thread it, so I'm going to use my other thing that I've got with me, and it's a very technical wet paper towel. <laughs> so I've just dampened it, it's not soaking wet. Um, and what this does is we just run the fibres through this. This is one way you can stitch with this, and it will just stick the fibres together long enough for me to use it and thread the needle. And then it will just dry naturally and it will just sit nice and flat. So you're not using anything on it. That's better. It really is stitching with the Emperor's New Clothes. You really can't feel this at all. So I'm just going to run those two through this towel. And it's suddenly controllable. Well, a little bit more controllable anyway. Really, really can't feel this thread, but so not in the end. And see what happens. Now, I've never stitched letters with this. Don't see that it should be any different. I'm going to use the same stitch so you can have a direct comparison. I'm just using my knot and my two starting stitches. Right, now we need another tool at this point because I've got two threads, now I've got to control those threads together and also because it's not spun, even if you're only using one thread, the fibres can separate. So this is a really good time for one of these. This is a Malor, this is a laying tool. Love these in our shop. And this is a great time to use it. So it's just going to help you control that down. So I'm going to just use that Malor as an extension to my hand and it just helps control that thread, keep the separate fibres together. Actually went back down the same hole then. <laughs> Might be the same hole as well. It really is quite difficult to see. So Malor in. And I want you to see this because this is real time. This is me with a fair amount of embroidery experience. learning how to use a quite difficult thread. Right, we've got our two stitches, we're ready to go. So I'm going to keep my Malore handy. You can see I'm using that instead of my fingers to control it and it will just keep the two together. There's my loop, I'm going to come up inside the loop. Just guide that down. If you don't have a Malore, you can use a big tapestry needle, something like that just so you can control it down. I think a shorter length would have helped. But it's going in quite smoothly. It is nice and smooth. It's just keeping the two strands together that's my concern really. So let's get that knot out of the way because that's Getting in the way. It's better, because see what I'm doing now. So to go around a nice tight curve, I'm just going to do some really short stitches. And, can, and because this is a really fine thread, you can do lots of tiny details with this. 
So a great one if you want to do something really delicate, really detailed. Right, getting into the swing of it a little bit now. Just learning how to handle it. And if it sort of starts to fluff up again, I can just run it through my paper towel again. Just temporarily stick the fibres together while I'm using it. In fact, I will do that, I think. You need any advantage you can get with this thread. It's tricky. There we go. Okay, so let's head down here and we'll have another little assessment of it when I get to the bottom. So I'm just coming to the end now, and one thing I am noticing is it's starting to fluff up a little bit. So my thread was way too long, so definitely much shorter threads for this. Um, could have probably got away with a finer needle as well, so we can make precise stitch placement. But yeah, it's starting to thread a little bit, and you definitely need some sort of a laying tool if you're going to put more than one length of this together, because it's just not staying together. I'm getting the hang of it now, so it's just, as with everything, a little bit of practice. This would normally look better in something like a satin stitch, so you can see that the shine of the thread, and you use your laying tool to help lay that thread flat so it doesn't twist over on itself and get some texture in it. You want a nice shiny finish on it. I did have a go with it with some satin stitch in um, our video, 10 stitches, no, 10 threads, one stitch, and I just compared different threads using one stitch so you could see what they look like. So you can check that out if you want to see what it looks like in a satin stitch, which is where it really comes into its own. I'm going to put a little French knot on the top here. I'm going to do a couple of wraps on this because it's very fine. Use the Malore to control the thread. So really, really fine details with this. It's very fine. You need some sort of laying tool to help control it and do just stick it together with a damp towel that will definitely help you to um, to work with this. So this one takes practice but it's very beautiful um, and you can do some really lovely details in it so definitely consider this one. So time to give away some silk threads for you. So we've got some different ones for you to try out with. So the first set that we've got is this twisted set so with three ply twists in got six nice colors here that go together for you to have a go with i've also got the flat silk so there's a reel of that for you to have a go in a nice green color and then we've also got these beautiful hand dyed threads as well now we've been having a discussion about these on the community page on my YouTube channel about what you think they might be dyed with. Um, you got one of them right, um, so I'll put you out your misery. So this first one is a madder, so that's a plant, a nice peachy colour. This second one is a cochineal, and that's been dyed a couple of times to get that really beautiful colour through there. And the third one is lac, as in shellac. If you're a painter, you'll know shellac, um, creating this beautiful pink colour. So I've got all of those to give away to you. So all that you need to do to have a go at winning these threads is to leave us a comment um, in the comment section below this video and include the words silky smooth, put that on the screen here. The winner will be picked at random, but do be creative with your comments because we do enjoy reading them um, and it'd be really great to see what you could come up with with those words. So today's date is the 27th of May, it's a Friday, so you've got a week, just over a week to um, put your comments down below. We'll do the draw on Monday the 6th of June 2022. Normally do it on a Friday, but it's the Queen's Jubilee here and we've all got the day off, so we're going to enjoy that. So we will do the draw on the following Monday. We will reply to the winner's message, so do make sure you check your messages, but we'll put it on social media as well and at the top of the video of the name of who has won. Um, if you don't uh, get in touch with us with your address details we can't send it out to you so you'll have a week to do that and if we don't um, hear from you we will have to redraw again so do make sure that you check your comments so we'll post these threads to you wherever you are in the world for free so do join in we look forward to seeing what comments um come back um, and good luck with a chance to win these threads so let's have a look at the next letter and we're going to have a go now with some of the stranded silk so we're going to try it with the Averisoir. Soir d'Alger 
and I'm just going to see, I don't actually know if this works. So when we did the video on the stranded, we could find the right end to pull and it had this pull through method and you could just pull the thread out and it came nice out the skein. So I'm going to try it with this one. So I've got an end there and an end here. And this one looks like it comes out of the middle. So I think it's that one. So we'll see. It is, that comes out nicely. So you don't get your, th your skein all in a knot. Keep my length quite short and I can just pull these strands apart now and just choose how many strands I want. So best way to do this, pick one, pull it straight up, another one, pull it straight up and then this doesn't get in a knot. So let's put those together and see if we want another one. I might put a third one in there. Looks good. So I'm going to use an embroidery. Try the number seven, see how that goes. So again, I'm going to have the same problem that I had with the flat silk and that's keeping these strands together. So I'm going to use my lane tool again for this. Do a couple of stitch without just to see what that looks like. See, feel how uh, how that feels and whether they're separating or not. This feels the smoothest so far actually and I've got three strands in there so there's lots of potential for those to separate out but it isn't really doing that so to carry on for a little bit do a couple more stitches in that now what you should really do technically is pull it through from the back and then through from the front so you're not wearing the thread Let's try it with the laying tool. Right, this is easier to stitch with than the twisted one, that first one we used. It's going through much more smoothly, even though it's thicker. So it's definitely just worth trying these on a piece of fabric first, just to see what they do, see what the different characteristics are. You don't need to do much to see what the difference is in them, but they do feel different. Okay, this one's going in nice and smoothly, so we'll go all the way around this letter, and again we'll have another look at it at the end. I'm liking this one the best so far, I think, but what it doesn't do quite is have that shine that these other ones have got. I don't know that you would know it was silk especially. It's got beautiful rich colour, but it's not got that sheen on it, so if you want that on it, you might want to consider the Soir de Paris one, which has got more of the shine to it, but otherwise Really, really beautiful threads, gone in really easily, didn't get knotted, didn't get twisted, and I used three three strands of it as well, so quite impressed with that one. So what I wanted to try for that last one, because we have tried the three different kinds, is to try the slightly thicker perle. So this is the Avera Soir Perle one. Um, but what I wanted to do is try it with some beeswax. Now I have heard this before, that you can wax the threads and this was from somebody who has um, silk thread company and they said yes you can wax it. I was quite surprised by this because I only ever use wax for sort of gold work to protect the thread when you're stitching other threads down or on the very end of your thread if you're struggling to thread your needle. I never actually wax the whole thread so I'm going to try it and see what that's like. So I'm going to stitch a bit first without it and then I'm going to wax the thread and try a bit with and see what the difference is. Now this is similar to that red thread, so I'm expecting it to twist up a little bit. Now I've tried that one and kind of know how it reacts, so it's a case of letting it untwist underneath and maybe the beeswax will help with that. It might make it worse, but you don't know unless you try. So this sampling is very important. I do have a video on about sampling and why you should do it and how you should do it if you're wondering why I keep mentioning that. 
So let's do a little bit in this first. It's actually quite nice and smooth, this one. It's got a real shine to it as well. So if you want it to brush out silk, you can get one of the more shiny threads. Very nice and smooth, but it is, you can see it curling up. And that's the action of it coming through the fabric. So what you need to do is just, when it's on the back, just let the needle go, let it untwist and come back up just to stop it doing that. Get the knot out of the way. So we'll do just a couple more stitches and I'm going to wax it and see what difference that makes. I'm a bit sceptical about it, but we'll try it and see what happens. So all you need to do is just get the wax underneath the thread, not plastering it in beeswax, just a coat of it. I'm just going to pull it through. I'm actually going to unthread it so I can take it all the way off the end. So just once is enough. That just coats the fibres and sticks any fibres together that are sticking out from that. So it should make it a bit smoother. So we'll see if that makes any difference. Yeah, I can feel it. it doesn't feel so smooth going through the fabric now. But it's not twisting up quite like it was, so maybe there's something in that. Yeah, it doesn't feel quite as soft and smooth as it did before. Just going to let that still twisting up because that's the action of the stitch rather than the type of thread. So it doesn't feel as soft, um, but it does feel a slightly more controllable. So it depends really which one you want to have the more have more. Do you want it to have that nice soft feeling, or do you want to be able to stitch more easily with it? So. We'll come all the way around, we'll get to the end, and then I'll see what I think at the end. Just right at the end of this one now, I've had a few problems with it, and I think it was after I waxed it, so I've gone back to not waxed thread. I think the wax is probably better on the stranded ones because you can sort of stick the strands together. Although I think if I'd waxed this, this wouldn't have this nice look to it. It would, it would sort of all be stuck together and look a bit different. Um, but one thing it was good for, I discovered, is when this end starts fraying, which it does, then you can wax the end and they don't have that problem to deal with. So wax the end, I would say, um, and experiment with waxing other threads. I'm not convinced myself, but have a go yourself and see what you think. You might disagree with me. Um, the other thing I think is happening as well is with these twisted threads, so the purlays and the ones that have been twisted together, the two and three plies is, because they're already twisted, when you're stitching with them, you add extra twist because of the way you're stitching and it's specific to certain stitches as well. And that's what's making it really twist up um, and I'm having to let the needle drop and that and twist quite a lot every two or three stitches. So something to consider about, um, to consider if you'll want to use the twisted one as well. The stranded ones don't do that, which is why it went in much more nicely, but then you do have to think about your tension and keeping your strands together. So some, some different things to think about depending on what look you want to create. So for all of you members and our new patrons out there, thank you very much for supporting us. We really appreciate it. We've got something a little extra for you coming. I'm going to do this design. I'm going to pick some of those threads that we've gone through today and stitch that in this. And you can see how I do that and I'll talk through that design. So do look for that coming very soon. If you want to be a member or patron, if you want to see this video and other videos as well that we've got just for you, then do check out the description below to see how you can join us um, and help to support us and get some extra content just for you. So I will put this design up for everybody um, to have a go at if you would like to have a go at this little mandala design in whatever threads that you would like to have a go at it in. I'll put that on the free stuff page on the website. The link for that will be in the description below the video as well. So just a quick roundup then of these silk threads that we've looked at. So look out for the three different kinds of threads, whether it's a flat silk, it's a twisted silk or it's a stranded silk. Those are the three things you need to look out for. Have a little go with them to see how they work for you. They do all behave differently. They feel differently. They look different as well. So it is worth doing a little sample of those to see what you like. And don't forget as well, all our other videos, we've got to make a playlist here. You can see that here for you of the 
um, other um, threads that we've covered before, so the stranded cottons and the linen and the cheap threads as well. So do check that out there. Um, give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this and we'll see you next time.